How's it going, good people? Rob here, Old City Vapor, with another weird story for Weird Wednesday. Yeah, sound effects, man. I'm going high tech. Um, <laughs> this story, uh, not not really a ghost story. Not a you know, no uh, weird paranormal thing. Just one of those weird stories. I figured I'd tell you fine people who. Uh, are actually watching um one of those weird situations that i always seem to find myself right slap dab in the middle of um i don't know why it happens that way it just does uh for my vaping friends out there i'm using my igo w uh on the provari mini and today i'm trying out some new juice i just got in the mail today got vape mail which was awesome uh some puppy drool from pitbull vapor pitbull vape puppy drool kind of green not kind of green it's definitely green uh, <laughs> there's no kinda about it um this is like a kiwi berry type flavor and uh it's pretty tasty actually just cracked it open a little earlier today and uh, take a vape real quick plenty of pluminous clouds on this stuff puppy drool pretty tasty stuff anyways the story begins like I say summer day Florida not a cloud in the sky uh, plenty warm plenty hot um, shop was full of customers and I'm in the back room uh, packing some stuff up trying to get it ready for the UPS guy to come pick up it was about probably 3 30 4 o'clock in the afternoon um, the owner was there. He was working up front, uh, helping a customer. Um, his wife was actually helping another customer and another one of our co-workers at the time. They were, uh, helping yet another customer. I'm in the back packing stuff, answering the phone, doing this, doing that. Um, I hear ding front door, you know, somebody coming in. I kind of poked my head out of the back, uh, back room door, you know see if I need to go up front there's this dude comes in the front door um, I could tell right from the second he walked in he was looking a little a little uh, strange a little uh, frazzled nervous what have you I see him talking to the owner you know and the owners kind of like uh, he's pointing back to me you know and he looks at me and he's like come come talk to this dude so I come out you know dudes walking back towards me um, the closer he gets to me, the more I realize uh, something's not right. This dude is uh, sweating profusely, <laughs> has uh, a look of full-blown terror on his face, and he's mumbling and talking kind of incoherently, and, and I'm thinking, awesome, the dude's uh, bugging out on something, you know? Yeah, of course. I get this customer. Awesome. But I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? And he's just like, oh, yeah, I got this money and I, I don't know what to do and I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I don't want any trouble and here, take this money, you know. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to take your money, man. What, what's happening? And he's just rambling. He's just babbling, not making any sense. Uh, sweating like, I mean, just sweating bullets. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, hey, come, you know, come back here, you know kind of take him in the the door area of the back room because by now you know all the other customers in the store are all kind of like they're all <laughs> they're all looking like the heck's going on you know Is this guy gonna freak out and pull out a gun and start shooting and uh you know i i carry a gun usually and i'm kind of like casually like feeling in my pocket and I'm realizing son of a 
I don't have a gun. It's over by my desk in my bag. Great place for that right now. Uh, and I'm talking to this dude, and he's uh, he's, he keeps trying to give me this money. Um, I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna take your money, man. What's the problem? You got a problem? I'll, I'll help you. I'll gladly help you out. You know, you got to tell me what the problem is. You're not making any sense. You know, and he's just he's just rambling and babbling and telling me, you know, he's got this money that he found and these jeans and and he doesn't want any trouble and he needs help and he's scared and he's you know needs a witness and I'm like finally had to kind of grab him and shake him for a second and I'm like dude chill out take a breather you want something to drink we got uh, water coke beer whatever you want man <laughs> you need to chill tell me what the problem is because you ain't making any sense man I, I don't know I don't know what to do if you can't tell me uh, he kind of slows down for a second and he's like I found this money in these jeans and I I don't want any problem I don't want any truck and he just shoves the money in my hand you know and I'm looking you know I got this handful of cash and I'm like man I don't want you know he won't wouldn't take it back he's like I don't want it I don't want it I don't want to touch it I don't I'm freaking out and I'm like yeah obviously you're freaking out kind of got me freaking out so a little backstory real quick a little break here the place I used to work at was a uh, just a retail store you know and and we did a lot of online orders and, and stuff like that uh, also had a storefront and um, it was a pranksters playground <laughs> it was a fun place to work at the time before uh, all the changes came about and the the owner sold it and the new owner took over and uh, anyway it was uh everybody was in on the pranks it was I mean the owners you know the other people that worked there we were all in on it everybody would prank each other we would prank the customers we pranked the UPS guy all the time uh, we would film it and uh, you know at, at one time several years ago we had uh, a thing online called the prank files that you know we would film the pranks and each other whatever and we had them online on our, our website so people could check them out so you never knew what was gonna happen you, you know sit in your office desk chair and there'd be an air horn taped under it you know open the refrigerator an air horn and blast you in the face or something would jump out at you you get locked in the bathroom we had you know the soundboard we'd always answer the phones when the telemarketers would call we had a soundboard set up we could uh, do conversations with the telemarketers with the soundboard I held the record kept one on the line for 18 minutes one time using a, a Hank Hill soundboard uh, we actually got a credit card sent to the store by simply using a soundboard that tells you how secure that credit card company was anyway so you never knew what to expect uh, you come outside you have a Tin foil penis this big taped to the grill of your car and if you didn't check it out you would get in the car and drive around with this thing on the front of your car and uh, you know imagine the looks that you would get driving around town with that zip tied to the front of your grill anyways that did happen uh, <laughs> I tin foiled one of my co-workers desk he went on vacation supposed to be gone a week and he was gone a couple of weeks and uh, maybe a little longer so I thought it would be a great idea to go across the street buy like I don't know a dozen rolls of tin foil and tin foil his entire desk phone chair computer screen keyboard everything was covered in tin foil and uh, it was funny I came in the next day and I had the big uh, dong made out of tin foil that was highly uh, anatomically correct on my desk and it went around anyways completely other story I'm getting way off track here but you get the point pranks were abundant at this place so I'm thinking I'm getting pranked right now these guys set me up I'm in the middle of a prank this guy's freaking out he's uh, sweating bullets losing his mind not making any sense shoving money in my hand I'm thinking well hell at least I'm getting paid for this prank I didn't count it I don't know how much it was uh, I'm keeping my guard up still you know um, figured well at least I'm getting paid for this one 
So I'm going to go with it, you know. And the dude starts, you know, I get him to chill out. He starts kind of somewhat calming down. He's breathing heavy. He's still sweating like crazy. And I'm like, what's the problem, man? I can't help you unless you tell me. And he's like, I... Um, I work next door and I found this money and I just I'm like I need help and a witness and 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 I and I'm like what is it and he's like I think there's a dead body next door <laughs> so I'm like okay cool at least we know what the problem is now uh, so I'm like for sure this is a prank you know and I'll tell you the place next door I'll set that up it was a a goodwill uh, like a drop off it wasn't really a drop off even though people would come up and drop stuff off they just leave stuff out front it was more like a sorting facility where the truck would come in that picked up stuff from all the you know goodwill drop off places they'd bring it to this place and they'd sort it out you know see what it was i don't know what the i didn't work there i'm just kind of gathering what they did and, and uh you know what i saw but anyway it was a goodwill sort sorting station or drop-off station whatever uh, redistributing station whatever um, so he tells me he thinks there's a dead body next door I'm like all right um, do you want to call somebody and he's like no no man I, I don't want to call anybody <laughs> like well what do you want to do and he's like I need somebody I need a witness man I, I don't want to get in any trouble I need somebody to help me I don't know what to do and blah 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 I'm like all right you know let's uh let's go next door and uh i guess we'll take a look at the dead body and <laughs> figure it out from there i'm still thinking prank you know so we're walking across the parking lot and uh he's telling me he's like man i i've i've seen a lot of dead bodies man and i know what a dead body looks like and and i know what a dead body feels like and none I, I can't handle it anymore. I don't want it anymore. I'm done. I, I just, I'm, you know, and I'm thinking, man, this dude's a good actor. You know, he's, he's, uh, good. I'm kind of recognizing him, but not really, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, this, this guy's good. Okay. You know, I go over, we get a, we get to the place. The door's wide open. He just hauled ass out of there, apparently. Um, so I kind of look in, you know, and I'm thinking, these guys set me up for, fear factory or whatever that show is you know are you scared well you should be you know so i'm looking around i'm doing a full-blown kind of scan of this place i'm looking for cameras i'm looking for anything out of the norm you know i'm not really seeing anything i'm kind of looking back outside in the parking lot i don't see any other cars i don't see a truck you know other than our own vehicles and the customer's vehicles next door this guy, there's no, there's no car over there with him either. Um, I'm kind of like, okay, you know, this is a good one. I'm like, all right, man, where's the dead body at? You know, and he's like, it, it's in that cart, you know. And this dude's standing in the doorway. He won't, he won't even come in. I was like, well, show me. And he was like, it's over there, man. He's like, you know, the cat. You're trying to drag the cat towards the water, and they got the claws out. He ain't coming in. There's no way he's coming in. <laughs> I'm like, all right, you know, so I go over, I'm like, this cart right here, and he's like, yeah, hey, yeah, so I'm kind of looking over the edge of the cart, you know, and it's, it's this big, big cart, you know, these big, uh, I don't know what they're called, it's a big metal frame cart canvas, you know, on wheels that they wheel this stuff around in, plenty big enough to, uh, you know, throw a dead body in or something. So I'm thinking, you know, one of my friends is going to jump out of this cart, scare the crap out of me, you know. So I'm looking around. I see an umbrella. I grab the umbrella. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm thinking, a dude jumps out of the uh, cart. I'm I'm whacking him upside the head with the umbrella, you know. So I'm kind of looking over the edge, you know, and I'm kind of scanning it, seeing what I see, and there's these, it's full of, clothes and stuff you know like would be in a goodwill cart and there's these bags in there that are like kind of like bags but they're like black plastic and they're all wrapped up and, you know got duct tape on them and stuff <laughs> and i'm like ah oh, cool you know they they went all out on this one man and i look and i see on the end of the cart kind of out of the end of one of these long bags 
I see this black hair. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. Not really cool, but I'm starting to get freaked out, you know. And I'm looking around again. I kind of step back, and I'm I'm looking around. I'm like, this has got to be a, a prank, you know. And I look over at the dude, and, and he's freaking now, you know. Dude, a grown man crying, basically. I mean, and this guy, he's probably mid to late 20s, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe 30, I don't know, I'd say mid to late 20s, uh, black dude, built good, I mean, looked like a bodybuilder, dude didn't have an ounce of fat on him, I mean, he was built, and, uh, he was shaking, freaking out, uh, breathing heavy, hard, not catching his breath, crying, basically, and I'm like, man, this dude's good, you know, but at the same time, I'm freaked out now. I'm shaking, you know. I don't want to be pulling out no dead body. And I'm thinking, well, it is summer here in Florida. Uh, it is 90-something degrees. I'm thinking, you know, if there's a dead body in here, wouldn't I be smelling it by now? And I kind of look back over the edge of the cart, you know. And the, the cart's like up to like here on me. It's a, it's a big cart. Kind of looking over the edge. and I'm like, man, these big bags in here wrapped up like in black you know plastic with duct tape around them and there's like hair sticking out on one end this isn't good man and I'm starting to get really freaked out now as if I wasn't freaked out from the get-go but uh yeah I'm, I'm kind of wondering what's going on so uh, I see this one bag and it's it's like this big you know and I kind of poke it with the with the umbrella I kind of poke it you know and I can tell when I poked it I could feel that it was pretty heavy I mean it didn't just flop over it's kind of heavy uh, it's like oh man I kind of poke around in the, the cart with the with the end of the umbrella I don't know what you know poking was but I was feeling good with my goodwill self-defense item since I didn't have a gun or anything on me I don't know what he's going to do, shoot, maybe as a zombie, you know, stab him in the head. Um, so finally, I'm just like, screw it. I'm like, you sure it's this cart? And he's like, yeah. And I reach over and I grab this black bag. And I feel it's pretty heavy, you know. And I go, I figured I'd just reach in and grab it. Well, it's kind of heavy, you know. So I pick it up and I'm holding it. And I'm thinking, damn, man, this thing feels like it's got a bowling ball in it. And then, you know, it hits me. Or a human head. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm kind of freaking out, you know. As I kind of set it down immediately, you know, on the top of this other cart. And I kind of poke it again with the umbrella. I don't know what the hell poking it was going to do. But at the time, I thought it sounded like a great idea. Uh, I poked it again, and, you know didn't move didn't do anything wasn't really stinking you know I kind of look back over and there's another black thing in there that's wrapped up got duct tape around it and I see this freaking black hair on the end of it and that was not cool at all <laughs> um, so I'm figuring well if this is a head it should have the hair on it so what is that end with the hair that looks long and black looks like human hair it's like screw it I'm in it I'm going for it I start ripping this bag open this dude like I say he's still in the door he's nope I'm not coming in I'm not taking any part of this he's ready to haul ass at a second's notice I'm like here I go I'm in the middle of it in a weird situation as usual what the hell I start opening the bag and I realize once I get into it and this thing's wrapped up like Fort Knox it's not a human head it's clothes that are somehow like compacted I don't know if they like put, put them in one of those you know bag sucker things whatever the heck they're called um, you know but they compact the clothes down I don't know maybe they put them in one of those and somehow you know got them in this uh this black why would they wrap it up in black plastic i i don't know but uh 
it's, it's wrapped up and it's closed. And there are these dark, dank, damp, funky, old clothes that reminds me of, like, if you go to the grocery store and you buy a pound of coffee and it's vacuum packed into a brick, that's kind of what these clothes were like. Uh, just full blown, compacted down as like they were a brick, a clothes brick is what it was. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, at least it wasn't a human head, right? So now I got the unfortunate task of looking back into the cart and seeing hair coming out of the end of one of this this long bag that was probably... This one's now like four feet long, you know, and it's kind of cockeyed in this cart with hair coming out of the end of it. And I'm thinking, you know, prank, prank, prank. Or did Dexter not have the boat and he dropped off the body parts in a goodwill drop-off station somewhere i don't know what to think i'm scanning the room again no uh film crew to be seen anywhere nowhere to hide really in this room i look back across out the door over to where i work at and it was always a telltale sign if you you know came outside and you looked over and you saw somebody, you know, looking out the window or something. I look back across to where I work. Nobody's looking out the window. I don't see anything out of the norm. Uh, you know. Figure what the hell. Grab my umbrella again. My goodwill self-defense tool that I found. Hey, you got to survive, right? I'm, uh, I'm poking this big bag. <laughs> back to the poking again. I'm poking. I'm prodding. I'm prying. This thing feels heavy. It feels heavy. I braved up and I reached in the over in this cart and I grabbed it and I pulled it. And I'm thinking, son of a crapper, this thing's heavy and it does feel like it could be a body. And uh, when I moved it, the hair on the end moved and I was not in. Uh, I was not digging it at all. I uh, reached over and I pulled it again. I look back. I'm like, you want to help me? And he's like, oh, hell no. He's not. He's he's practically uh, already left. Um, I'm like, if this is a dead body, dude, we got to call the cops. He's like, no, we can't call the cops. I don't want trouble, man. I don't want any trouble. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you right now. I, got, I don't have my gun on me, but I had my cell phone on me. I'm like, pull it out. I said, I'm calling the cops, man. If this is a dead body, what are we going to do? Take it out back and put it in the ditch behind the building? We got to call somebody, man. He's freaking out, you know. I don't want my boss knowing. I don't, I don't want trouble, man. I, I'm like, whatever. I'm fucking calling somebody. Captain Kangaroo, the the cops. I don't. We're calling somebody. <laughs> so, uh, you know, poke it a few more times. I reach over, I pull it. I get the umbrella. And I stick it in the hair. And I figure, well, I'll pull it up from that end. And God really hopes I don't pull up a head or part of a skull or something. I pull the hair up. And I throw it on the floor. And I realize the hair's a wig. There's a wig in here. And it wasn't actually coming out of the black bag. Plastic wrapped up. Corpse looking shaped item but it was a wig that was somehow in the freaking cart with this stuff so I didn't just threw it on the ground I didn't want to touch it <laughs> I'm freaked out I'm shaking like a leaf myself but at least the hair wasn't attached to a head and it was a wig so I'm feeling a little better and I'm thinking I'm, I'm gonna kick somebody's ass if this is a joke, because by now, I'm, I'm shaking, I'm freaking out, I don't, you know, whatever, so my adrenaline's going at this point, I reach over, I grab this bag, and I pull it to the side of the cart, and I'm like, looking around for something to, a knife or something to cut it open with, and I just start tearing it open with my hands, and, uh, I get it open, after, there's like layers and layers of plastic and duct tape, what the hell, you know? Uh, I get into it, and I realize it's the same clothes that were in the bag that I thought had a head in it. Um, 
I don't know if these people had taken these clothes to like the junkyard, put it in a car crusher or something, but it was it was like a truckload of clothes that were compacted into a huge giant clothes corpse. <laughs> I don't know. And then wrapped it up in black plastic and duct taped it. So I could see where this dude may have thought that it was a dead body because it weighed like 80 pounds you know and it could be missing a head and maybe some legs so I don't know kind of made sense I'm like dude it's not a dead body you know I pulled some of this stuff out like pried it apart uh, the stuff wasn't really even wearable at this point because it had looked like it had been wet and like compacted and I'm thinking you know I don't smell anything that smells like a dead body even if they're hiding it inside this brick of clothes um, so whatever you know it's uh, I think everything's cool man and, and he's like starting to calm down a little bit once he sees the first bag he sees a wig there was this big baby doll with a leg sticking out you know it's like a life-size baby doll in there as well that was pretty damn creepy but it was like it was like the goodwill bin from hell is what it was <laughs> so I could see how the dude would be freaked out because I'm I'm pretty freaked out at, at the time myself um, so the guy kind of calms down and he's telling me he, he then tells me that um, my door just shut by itself rather peculiar um, the dude tells me that he just got back like a month or so prior to all this happening. Uh, he tells me, he tells me he just got back from Afghanistan or wherever he was, uh, you know, in the service and he was over there and he's like, man, I've seen so many terrible things and I can't sleep at night now. I'm having nightmares and I'm, I just can't deal with, with it anymore, you know, and the dude was obviously uh, it was then I realized this is not a prank you know I'm, I'm thinking prank 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 the whole time but at the same time it, I'm thinking damn good prank you know they got me ready to crap my pants uh, but I could tell then you know it wasn't a prank this dude was legitimately suffering from whatever post-traumatic stress syndrome disorder whatever it is he was legitimately freaking out told me he couldn't sleep and he was having nightmares and you know just this whole thing he was starts apologizing um i'm like man you know don't you didn't gotta apologize to me dude it's it's good man you, you're you're fine you're okay you know i legitimately understand your your uh level of stress man uh, i felt really bad for the dude <laughs> But at the same time, I'm like, thank God it wasn't a dead body in here because I didn't really want to deal with that myself. But uh, obviously this dude had seen a lot of bad stuff, was really freaked out. Um, I felt really bad for the guy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, after he told me where he had just come from and just wasn't doing good, uh, you know, just I felt bad for him. Uh, he came over the next day apologized again you know and he was like all embarrassed and I'm like man it's it's all good dude don't worry you know it's it's all good I'm you know so do you want to go across the street after work man I'll buy you a beer or something you know you can, we can talk about it whatever so but you ain't got nothing to worry about man it's it's all good um I was the last time I saw the dude I don't know what happened if he uh quit you know and I told him when we were in there after all this went down I'm like dude you need to get a radio up in here and play some music and somebody needs to go across the street to Ace Hardware and buy some freaking light bulbs because this place is dark it's funky the walls are painted like military gray no wonder you're in here uh, hallucinating thinking you thinking of weird shit <laughs> this place is creepy you know and you got these big bins of you know old clothes that come from who knows where you know it's kind of creepy in itself if you think about it who knows what you're gonna pull out of there but uh you know he he uh he came over the next day and that day 
by the way, I'll go ahead and say this, you know, I've got this money in my pocket that he shoved in my hand. I'm like, uh, you want your money back now? <laughs> that you realize it didn't come out of some, you know, dead girl's pants? And he was like, no, no, man, keep it. Just keep the money, man. I, I feel terrible. I feel terrible. I'm like, no, dude, it's your money. You found it, you know. So like, it's not like you're stealing it. I mean, these were clothes that somebody donated. It's not like you're going to be able to track down who donated the pair of jeans. He was like, yeah, yeah, we're not really supposed to do this. But, you know, I, I go through the pockets of all the clothes. And sometimes I find money and stuff. And I'm like, hey, man, it's all good. I'm not, <laughs> not going to tell anybody until now but uh hey dude's long gone i don't work there anymore he doesn't work there anymore apparently never seen him again since then don't know what happened to him uh disappeared after that next day never saw him again i don't know maybe he quit maybe he was too stressed out maybe he hopefully went and uh talked to somebody and got it uh got his uh stress issues worked out uh hope he got some help because he was a wreck uh, I hope he's not in a <laughs> Goodwill cart somewhere wrapped up in black plastic and duct tape. But, uh, <laughs> who knows, though. Never saw him again after that day. So there you go. Like I say, wasn't a ghost story. Uh, wasn't really paranormal or anything. It was just another one of those weird situations that I find myself in consistently throughout my life. Uh. That was just one of many weird situations that I'm always finding myself in. So there you go. Another uh, story of Weird Wednesday. Uh, who knows how long they'll go. Maybe I'm going to change the subject next week. I was going to try to go out today and uh, do some location, on-location filming. But yesterday was really nice here. Today, it's butt-ass cold again. I hate cold uh, it's going to freeze tonight here in Florida. That's just, nobody got time for that. So there you have it. My uh, weird woes of strange things. Uh, been vaping puppy drool from Pitbull Vape. Uh, pretty good stuff. Going to do a review on it, I guess, in, I don't know, a week or so. After I uh, go through some of this stuff. It is actually pretty tasty. Might want to check it out. Catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. As always, talk to you soon.